Welcome back. Today, we're going to be revealing how Amendment 3 is designed to shut out small businesses, give the market to the biggest players, and then set up Florida for some serious legal challenges. If you think this is going to be about opening up the market, well, get ready for a big reality check. Amendment 3 seems to legalize recreational marijuana, but in reality, it locks down the market for the biggest dispensaries already in control. The reason? The vertical integration trap. Vertical integration forces every dispensary to handle the entire process from growing to selling. This is a massive task that only big dispensaries can afford. Smaller cultivators and independent contractors are completely locked out. If you can't handle the whole process from seed to sale, you don't even stand a chance. It's expensive. Just to enter the lottery for a license costs $146,000. But running a vertically integrated operation can cost 20 to $50 million or more. This includes land acquisition, indoor growing facilities, processing labs, dispensaries, security, transportation, and more. So how can small businesses compete with multi-billion dollar corporations? The reality is they can't. Independent contractors focused on testing, security, or other services are shut out. Vertical integration forces businesses to do everything, leaving no room for smaller specialists. This is about keeping the market closed to big players. Amendment 3 ensures that. Amendment 3 isn't just bad for competition. It could open up Florida's marijuana market for major legal challenges beyond the state. With federal legalization of medical marijuana approaching, Florida's vertical integration model could be scrutinized. Federal law might require separating medical and recreational businesses. Under Amendment 3, Florida dispensaries could violate federal law by mixing both. In Horn v. Medical Marijuana Inc., a truck driver brought a RICO claim for false CBD marketing, arguing it violated federal law. The U.S. Supreme Court is debating whether RICO applies, with the potential for more lawsuits against cannabis businesses. This case could pave the way for similar claims against Florida's dispensaries, if they continue mixing medical and recreational after federal legalization. Florida's dispensaries could be vulnerable to RICO claims. RICO lets the government target businesses engaged in illegal activities across state lines. Florida's model could be at the center of all of these challenges. Any amendment that restricts competition and opens the door to RICO needs a rethink. This isn't a bad policy, it's a legal time bomb. Why does this even matter? Fewer businesses mean higher prices and fewer options for consumers. Basic supply and demand. Less competition, higher prices, and less availability. Amendment 3 could reduce dispensaries to just three or four big players dominating the state, meaning fewer choices, higher prices, and less product availability. Medical marijuana patients should be especially concerned. As recreational users flood the market, access to life-saving medications could shrink and cost could rise. At My Florida Green, we support responsible cannabis use but we cannot support deceptive amendments that harm competition and patients and risk federal challenges. If you care about fair business practices and protecting medical patients' access, voting no on Amendment 3 is critical. Thanks for watching, and let us know in the comments, what do you think about Amendment 3? Your voice matters.